welcome to the Edwin B. Forsyth National Wildlife Refuge. We're putting in the Captain Greg, Grady White, trusty boat here on Barnegat Bay, New Jersey. And off in the distance there, you can see Long Beach Island and to the north of that, Island Beach State Park. Let's see how the fishing is on this November day. Came out of the Barnegat Inlet, turned out north, headed up, followed the fleet. Look at that, he got a bunker on already. Nice size one, too. Are you gonna use that for live bait? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Would, and where'd you get that one? Oh, uh, a <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Yeah. All right, Greg's hooked up with something. You a very large bunker or a nice trade? Well, it's gotta be a pretty I, large I, oh, bunker. Oh, oh, you gotta, you gotta jump one up line, too. All right, we'll get there. I think uh, I heard some drag get taken out. I can't believe a bunker would take drag out of your reel. We are here amongst the fleet this morning. I mean, we just started fishing. Still taking drag. A little bit. That's got to be a striper. Come on. Got to be. <laughs> yeah, it's impressive, huh? Mm -hmm. The bunker's still jumping all around it. Yeah. That's what you came for, I bet. You see old Barney in the lighthouse right there around the tip of Greg's rod underneath it. Now, <laughs> right underneath it. Island Beach State Park. We came out and headed north, out of Barnegat Inlet. Yep. Amongst the fleet. crazy amount of bunker it, showing up here. Line, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't think that's the one I have though. I think that's another one. Too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <sighs> Watching those other two rods. I got my eye on them. Yeah. Okay. We'll worry about those after we get this one in. What do you have on there? A, a fake, uh, a fake bunker? Tsunami. Swim shot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's a, there's definitely a fish on this yeah, rock. Well. So get that one in. <laughs> a... Okay. Uh... Oh, there. Okay. Hang hey, on. he's not dumb. He went under the boat. Tied up two more rods with him. Oh, wait. oh, oh no, that might, that's a big fish. Oh, holy cow. Are you kidding me? Wait, we got to get this other rod out. We, you want the net? Yeah. Okay, hang on, hang on. Look at the size of that fish. Beauty, huh? No, get him in there. Oh my gosh, holy cow. Holy cow, Greg. <laughs> Sorry for the camera work. Sorry. Oh. Okay, he's in. He's safe. There she is. Whatever, whatever it is. Oh, that's that's a big. Is that the biggest one you ever caught? I mean, that's huge. Uh, that's about where we're catching. That's. <laughs> let's okay. Let's get that fish up and. Yep. You got that other line back in? No, go under. Here, should I take care of it? Okay. Shame, it's gonna go back in the water, though. Yeah, you gotta measure it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's what's the slot? Oh, that's. That is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the biggest striped bass I ever saw. That thing's got to weigh 30 pounds. He's off the scale. Oh, he's at least 43 inches long there. Yeah. Wow. Okay, hold him up. Go get a picture of him. Wow. Impressive. <laughs> I 
How, how, how you doing with that? As soon as you're done with that, I got one to reel in, I think. Okay, that's the way to break in the shirt, buddy. Way to break in the shirt. One of my faves, the shark. Oh. striped bass was too big to keep according to the rules and we're not going to keep this particular spiny dogfish shark so off you go into the wild bye bye so you can see the bunker the bait fish just jumping off the surface here and if you see that there's a very good chance that the predator fish the bigger fish the stripers will be behind it so that's what we're looking for so my line just got a hit so i'm gonna see i'm gonna see if there's anything on there these are pretty feisty bunkers they are. They're fun to catch. Here he comes. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> so, Bunker. <laughs> Famous bait fish of New Jersey. <laughs> okay? Give him a little kiss. Catch us some nice. fish. We'll put you in a live well till yep. we need you. Yep. Okay. Okay. Don't know how to. Okay. Going after these bunkers. Now look at that rod bed from this bunker. <laughs> That's fun action. Trying to catch these fish so we can live line them for the bigger fish. And here he comes. There you go, fresh bunker. <laughs> Good stuff. It's fun. It's fun. Miss Barnegat Light, she's been out here trolling with us little guys. Plenty of bait in here right now. Heck, I'm loading up on bunker so I can take them out kayak fishing this summer. I'll take them home and freeze them. It cost you a couple bucks at the store. I just want to show you right now. There are so many fish out here right now. We're just off the North Jetty. There's the Barnegat Lighthouse to the right-hand side of the screen. Just off the North Jetty, there are bunker jumping all around us. All around us. So I'm, you know, doing some snag fishing for bait. I'm loading up, as I said earlier, for next summer's kayak fishing, because you can freeze these, you can cut them up, and uh, it's really fun. And for shore fishing, too. Surf fishing. But holy cow. I don't know that I've ever seen this many bait fish and the stretch from the north jetty all the way up here way way up by the it's like a whole fleet of boats off a point up there along island beach state park meanwhile it started raining a little bit greg's out there fishing live bunker we figure like you know hey <laughs> we'll get some live bunker in Snack some live bunker, throw them out there. If that lure bait dies, put it in the thing. I'll freeze it. I'll use it next summer. Put another live one on there. 
There must be hundreds of thousands of bait fish out there right now. This is what you're looking for. Big old wall of tracking. The left side of the screen is where they are on each side of the boat. See how dense some of those bright spots are? And uh, to the right side of the screen is the up and down right under the boat. Well, we found another bird feeding frenzy. So we're gonna try this a little bit. I'm really content to be fishing for these bunkers because they really do make great bait in the summertime. It's got a little chilly out here, but I just showed you that sign where all the birds were coming down. Now the birds have moved on behind us and now we got into the bunker anyway. Here comes another, here comes another bait fish. I mean, they're fun. They're, they fight like crazy. <laughs> we'll, we'll cast out for another one. Just just stay on this for a second. This is how crazy this has been. I want you to work this time, but here we go. Cast out. There's a school of bunker. Let's see if we can fish one. <laughs> what was that like? 20 seconds? It didn't take long. What a fun way to load up. Just compromise. <laughs> okay. Bring him up. There he is. Off the hook. Thank you. And right into the. There he is. Look. And right into the live well. There you go. So, Greg believes he caught a bunker, which is kind of amazing because he's using a... What are you using here on this? A shad body. A shad body, okay. Oh, you did. Are you kidding me? So the bunker must be feeding on some other fish, right? Nice. Yeah, well, I think I just swiped this to the school and I decided okay. to hook up and... Yeah, all right. Behold. Well, that's legal to keep if you want. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to let him know. I'm going to live one. Yeah, okay, because yeah. that's legal. You got him on a straight hook. I'm on a straight hook. Fantastic. Again, you can see the barnegat. Old Barney, right there. We're on the other side of the North Jetty, just fishing right on the other side of the North Jetty. Right now. You can see some of the boats going in the Barnegat Inlet right there, on the other side of the Stone Jetty. I hope you're enjoying being with myself and Captain Greg on the Captain Greg out of Barnegat Inlet, New Jersey. Uh, you know, we had a great time, and when the bait shut off, we decided to try some other things, and I told Captain Greg that about 25 years ago, I was an avid Hawaiian sling style spear fisherman with snorkel. And I told him about the old South Jetty. The old South Jetty is south of the South Jetty at Barnegat Inlet. And it holds a lot of fish like tog, triggerfish, sea bass and such. And back in the day, I used to have a lot of good luck in there. The weather was in our favor. The wind was blowing away from the rocks so we could get right on up there along the jetty. And I put on a tog rig and dropped fish for tog, but we didn't get any. So off to the next adventure and here it is. Well, we didn't have any luck fishing on the old South Jetty out of Barnegat Inlet. I switched it up, put on some tog rigs and nothing. So came back out 
and uh, went north again, came out with some of the party boats. You can see there's one right off the stern and to the right of the picture, another one off the stern a little bit. Some of these boats are from as far away as Belmar. So they're chasing after the stripers with a boatload of fishermen hoping to get some. And unfortunately, our trolling episode didn't yield any results either. Boy, when the bait fish left, everything left, it was gone, the screens were blank. And at that point, it was cold, it was drizzling. We had had a great fun day, so why push it? We uh, decided to head on back into the inlet and go past old Barney again and head back home here in Eastern Pennsylvania. So let's take a little bit of look at that. And then I've got some surprises for you as to how I used those Menhaden, those bunker that I harvested. So during this video, you saw me starting to catch and keep the menhaden or the bunker fish. That's because I do a lot of kayak fishing out in the bay and I'm buying whole bunker for like three bucks, two bucks, four bucks, whatever, uh, a fish, sometimes more, sometimes less. But when you get into a school like that and there's you know thousands and thousands of them and you can rip through them with that weighted treble hook like that, which is perfectly legal, why not keep some, which was my thought, uh, for various purposes? And I'm gonna show you a couple of those purposes now. <laughs> Number one, if we have a live rigged bunker uh, that expends itself, that's no longer viable and no longer attractive to the game fish, then why throw it away? For me, you know, I'll throw it into the cooler and cool it down and chill it because I can always chunk that up, cut it up into sections and use it for surf fishing or kayak fishing. So save that. And at the very worst, you can use it for gardening. And I'm gonna show you that a little bit later. I know that sounds weird, right? So I brought home 28 bunker and um, we have them on ice. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna load these up four in a bag. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I will then freeze these. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> Put them in the freezer. Three. Four. And that way when I'm ready to go down fishing again, I'll have bunker that I can chunk up. And I don't worry about that they're gonna freeze together. If you're worried about that, then freeze them individually first, then put them together or wrap them individually. But that's not necessary because like when I go out, by the time you get done setting up or the time I get done paddling out to where I'm gonna fish in the bay or going out to the shoreline where I'm gonna surf cast, um, they'll, they'll warm up and they'll pull apart from each other pretty easy. And then you just cut them up, chunk them up. Now, some people chunk them up before they bag them like this, but I don't see the point of that. So um, that's what we're doing with these. So I'm gonna keep uh, I'll keep about 12 of these for that. So I have three, four packs to take along on my next fishing trip. So into the freezer, these will go. Now I'm gonna show you the next thing we're gonna do with the bunker. All right, we'll fillet this just like we would any other fish. Cut right behind the head. Find the backbone. Go ahead and cut along the backbone. That's pretty tough skin there. Okay, here we go. All right, we get a fillet. Well, okay. So as you can see, these fish are loaded with, you know, blood and darker meat and such. This is where your fish oil comes from, your omega-3. This is why it's such a great, great and important fish. Well, let's put that aside. I'm gonna actually try to fillet one up here and I'm gonna try to eat it. I learned a long time ago, I live in Eastern Pennsylvania, about an hour north of Philly. And uh, I would go down with the party boats fishing out of Philly or out of uh, Jersey Shore and the guys from Philly would come and there'd be times that I was taught, oh, don't eat that, oh, that's too strong, oh, you're not gonna like that. 
And I'd go to throw it back and those guys would say, hey, are you throwing that back? And I'd say, yeah. And they'd say, well, can we have it? I said, of course you can have it. Well, tell me though what you're gonna do with it. And they'd say, well, we're gonna eat it. I'm like, well, how do you do that? Show me. And they'd tell me or show me, you know, and uh, I don't know, it was really fun. I learned a lot from those guys. And I learned how to eat sea robins and eel pout and just all kinds of things that maybe not be the best looking fish or maybe even not the best tasting fish. And uh, I'm gonna clean this up. And so I learned that sometimes it's uh, the things that people say you shouldn't eat are pretty good. But everybody told me not to eat this bunker, so <laughs> I'm gonna try and eat it. Let's see if I can make anything out of it. I like to make a dipping sauce, especially when I'm trying to cover up flavor. Use a little bit of Hellman's Real Mayonnaise here. Okay, there's a little bit of that. Use a little bit of real lemon. I don't have any actual lemons here, so this is the next big thing. Put that in there. Use a little bit of Frank's hot sauce. That's the kind I like. A little bit. Eh, a little bit more. You can never overdo it with the Franks, especially if you're suspicious of what everything's gonna taste like. Now, this is easy. Just mix this together. You see it'll get a little clumpy there in the beginning, but the more you mix that, it'll soup blood together into a nice sauce. Mm, mm, mm. Look at that. Beautiful sauce. Beautiful dipping sauce right there. Okay, we got the dipping sauce. Here I've got a little bit of panko plain. A little breading just to throw something on there. Kind of help the flavor along, hopefully. Let's take our little fillets that we got off that bunker. Dip it in there a couple times. I didn't put any egg or anything in there. Let's make sure it's coated real nice. Set it aside. Take another piece. I don't know if I'll get past one piece, but I'll do two just in case. This is an experiment. Now, some of you who may have tried eating Bunker, you know, there are people out there that like to try everything like me. Um, you may be saying, oh my gosh, Dave. Oh boy, don't do it. Don't do it. But I don't know till I try myself. So next thing is to fry them up. We'll get our nonstick pan nice and hot. I'm going to use a little bit of this excellent Bragg's olive oil. It's wonderful stuff. Put a little bit in there. That should be enough, eh, maybe a little more because more is always better. We'll let that get hot and then we'll pop our fish fillets in. Okay, also threw some adobo all-purpose seasoning into the oil here and a little bit of sea salt and pepper. The adobo has ground up garlic and ground up onion, so that can't hurt. I'm gonna put this in to fry. Have it be a golden brown. I think this is enough of a sample, two little pieces. By the way, that's about what I got off of one bunker, this, these two pieces right here. So first of all, I'd say it's a lot of work. Okay, I smell the aroma. The aroma smells like your fish oil tablets. <laughs> we let that on there for about a minute, Let's turn it over. That's nice and brown. Sure it is. You can get it turned over. There we go. Get you in there, fry you up. Let that fry up for another 30 seconds or so. I could imagine if you could stomach it, eating this raw or eating it cooked. It's like the best source of omega-3 anywhere in the world from what I've been reading. It's been around since Native American times here in the United States and all over the world. It's just getting past that heavy, heavy, oily flavor. You gotta process it. I put it on ice, we put it on ice right away. We had it in the cooler and then we put it on ice until I processed it here. Otherwise, it's so oily that the oils can get rancid in it. Okay, that looks good. Let's get it out of here. Let's plate it up. Little piece there. Little piece there. That doesn't look bad, huh? Oh, yeah. We'll let that cool off and we'll try some of my magic sauce on it and we'll see what happens. Okay, here we go. Ready or not, fresh bunker or Manhattan. 
the stuff they used to make menhaden oil. They grind it up. Some people have the actual, uh, my buddy Greg was telling me that they have devices you can put in the back of your boats that you just keep feeding the menhaden into it and it chops it into chum and you have this big slick of oil and so forth going out the back of the boat. So if you're sharking or anything like that, uh, could really help. Okay, let's taste this little piece first. Dip it into my sauce, the magic sauce. It's gonna make it taste all better. Okay, first taste. Bunker. <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, I expected that to be gross. It's not bad. It doesn't even taste fishy. What the heck? Now that piece I cleaned all the red, the dark red flesh off of. Let's try this piece. I didn't clean it as meticulously. And there's some little pin bones left in this, but like when I eat sardines and stuff, like when you eat sardines, you just eat the bones and everything. So here we go. This sauce has a lot to do with making stuff taste great. You know what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna say that's not bad. Not worth the work to clean them for the little bit of meat you get off of them. You get less than a blowfish off of a one, one of these babies. They get up to 15 inches, so maybe if you got a bigger one, it'd be worth about. But if you keep them fresh and don't let the oil spoil, you could eat this. This is much milder than a sardine. Well, what do you know? A revelation, huh? Not bad. I'm glad I tried it. Try it sometime. Yeah, I really expected it to be grossed out. This is good. Okay, so now that we've tested this, honestly, I'm not kidding you, I wouldn't kid you. If it was gross, I would tell you. It's not about what I cooked or how I cooked it. It's about whether the fish tastes good or not. And this is, <laughs> this is not bad. Much milder than a sardine. And way milder than an anchovy. Wow. Really? If you were, a person who was having to subsist off the land and you had access to Menhaden bunker, you could you could live on this. So now I'm gonna show you the next thing that I do with fish. These are with the ones that we made uh, live uh, baited and uh, they expired during that process and didn't get eaten or taken by game fish. Why throw those out? I put them in a bag as I do with most of my fish carcasses and I bring them home and I put them in the garden. So let me show you that. Well, as you might've read in one of the graphics I put up in the video, Back in the earliest days of settlement on the east coast of the United States, a Native American by the name of Squanto, is the commonly known name, literally taught the pilgrims how to get a better yield from their crops by basically taking Manhattan or bunker and planting a fish aside of each corn stalk. And you know, they grew the three sisters then, the corn, the beans, the pumpkins or gourds or whatever. But uh, why let fish go to waste? I always bring my carcasses home. Check it out. I'm planting this in between rows of garlic that I planted about two weeks before our first frost here in Eastern Pennsylvania. This fish will nurture those garlic bulbs all winter long. To keep your soil really loose like this, it's a joy. And what a great use for the fish. Seems like a little extra work maybe, but if you're an avid gardener and you like to eat out of your garden, I think it's well worth it. And certainly it makes the fishing trip even more profitable. Cover them over. Well, and there you have it. That's gonna be some happy garlic. <laughs> I'm Dave Klein for Raptor Adventures. I hope you learned a thing or two or at least enjoyed my folly here. <laughs> See you during the next adventure. Take her easy.